No! Uh, that's right. Find out everything you want to know at the Headley Group Real Estate Show. Tune in, tune in for all the hotness. When it come to real estate, we cover all topics. First time homebuyers selling your property. Want to build an empire? Real life monopoly. We talk duplexes, triplexes, multifamily units, and commercial investments. We got you. The Headley Group got you. You can own whatever you want. Who going to stop you? We got you. The Headley Group got you. Here's your host, Mike Headley. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, how you doing? This is Mike Headley coming back live on the Headley Group Real Estate Show. Uh, hope you all miss me. Um, I hope you tuned in and locked and looked at our previous episodes, and we need that thumbs up. But without further ado, uh, we have a gentleman on the line who experiences extensive uh, knowledgeable in the real estate space. And again, I'm going to go down the, the, the list here because he has 20 years experience in commercial private lending. Um, he's dealt with and continue to deal with fix and flips, uh, fix and hold. And again, we're going to let him dive into that. Uh, he deals with single family up to one to four units as well as multifamily as well. With, and he works only with investors. This is only with investors. And without further ado, let's give a warm welcome to Mr. Mark Buford. How you doing, brother? Hey, I'm great, Mike. I'm great. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. Good to connect. Um, it's great to connect, and I think it's wonderful on this platform. So I will say, now you only up there, and they say Windy City, but it's beautiful time. You in Chicago. I'm in Chicago today. It is beautiful today. The sun is bright. And, the sun is bright. You know, it's Friday. We want to hit the streets as soon as we can, even That's in right. the midst of COVID, right? That's right. Even in the midst of COVID, we're going to dive yes. on that. So, uh, Mark, we're going we're gonna to hash, and because uh, I get these calls uh, and I get uh, uh, messages. People say, you know something? I want to find me a great lender. I need, I need a good retail lender, but the banks is not giving me what I want. The, some of the mortgage people is not giving me exactly what I want. And they want to buy properties. They want to flip them. They want to probably turn them. They want to ultimately get multifamily. Walk us through exactly what you do, how you can benefit them, and how you start in the business. Sure, sure. Um, so as you said, traditional lending or traditional banks, especially right now uh, within COVID, they don't necessarily like construction. So mm -hmm. um, they will do it, but it's going to be a bigger down payment and it's going to cost you uh, probably not so much as in rate, but the documentation. So where private lending or where private or hard money comes in to play is our value add is a couple of things. Speed to the market for one. As mm -hmm. you know, you work with a lot of traditional buyers mm -hmm. and it takes uh, 30 to 60 days to close a loan. Mm -hmm. Well, we come in and we can close a loan in 15 days. Pre-COVID, it was Ooh. seven to 10 days. Okay. So one of our value adds, Mike, is speed to the market. You know, mm -hmm. time is money. And, you know, it used to be where the big ate the slow. Well, now mm -hmm. it's the fast, I mean, the big eat the small, but now it's the fast eat the slow. Okay. So, so speed to the market is one you know, closing in seven to 10 days. And pretty much that's almost, that's the same as cash. Mm -hmm. Because now are you talking about you need title, right? It's still going to take about five days to get title. So we can mm -hmm. close just as fast as uh, cash can, right? So speed mm -hmm. to the market is one. Mm -hmm. The second thing is minimum documentation. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to bog the borrower down with, you know, a cavity search on their background mm -hmm. and tax returns, mm -hmm. WTs, you don't have to prove all that. Mm -hmm. So what's, what is key for hard money is we will pull a credit, okay. but we don't report credit. Mm -hmm. And we're only looking at a gauge. So minimum credit score is 660. Mm -hmm. And then we okay. want you to have capital. You have to have reserves. Okay. But that's just for your down payment, 10% uh, of your construction budget, and mm -hmm. then some reserves. So you have to have capital. So if you entity docs, uh, bank statements, copy of the ID is all that I need. So speed to the market and then minimum documentation. And then we like construction. So we don't care if you go in the house. Mark, let me interject. Give us, mm -hmm. give, give us, to the, give us that slowly again, 
exactly what you need documentation. I want to dive into that a little bit. What is needed again? So documentation, your entity doc, because we only make loans to entities, corporations mm -hmm. or LLCs. Correct. And so what we, what we would need, um, entity docs, that's a operating agreement, if it's an LLC, articles of incorporation, mm -hmm. and then certificate of good standing or certificate of existence, depending on the state. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people can get that from the Secretary's, Secretary of State website of their state. Exactly. Public information. Exactly. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. Now the operating agreement and or the bylaws, that's something that your attorney is going to put together. Correct. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's critical, Mike, for this one because people, a lot of investors, when they're just getting started, they'll say, hey, can I do this by myself? And I'll say, well, you can pull your teeth by yourself. <laughs> I like that. Great analogy. Right? Correct. But no, use a professional. Correct. You know, to get these documents done. Mm -hmm. So that's the entity docs. Then we need your asset reserve statement. So two recent statements on uh, your bank account. So your asset reserve statements, what I guess would just show is the debits and the credits or is there something well, else? It's going to show your, your liquidity. Okay, how liquidity. much money you have. Gotcha. Okay. Right. And what do you call that again? Asset? Just call it liquidity requirements. So liquidity bank requirements. Okay. Yeah. okay. Bank statements. Your liquidity. Okay. So you need to be liquid to a certain mm -hmm. degree to be able to afford the project you're looking at. Okay. Right? Okay. Because okay, Mike, the key thing for hard money is it's all about leverage. It's mm -hmm. one of my favorite words. And so leverage is, you know, to use something to its maximum advantage. So you're going to have a little money that borrower, that investor, mm -hmm. and we're going to give you a lot of money. Mm -hmm. As long as you have some, you'll leverage your little bit into, you know, our massive, probably we're going to do 80%. In some cases, ninety percent mm. loan to value. So, so, so I want and I want to okay break two things down. Mm. When you say eighty percent loan to value, you would finance eighty percent of the appraised value. Am I correct? Oh no, it's, no, it's not the appraised value. So, you're familiar with ARV? That's correct. after repair okay. value. Mm -hmm. So we'll loan seventy to seventy-five percent of the ARV, mm, but gotcha. we'll loan that eighty percent. And if you have experience, we'll even go up to 90% loan to cost. Okay. So that means the purchase price plus the acquisition. That's the total cost of the project. Okay. And right? so, so what would qualify a person for that experience, like you said, for y'all to say, okay, well, we like, he has enough, he qualifies. What does that criteria look like? Right. So the qualification is minimum credit score and then the reserve. So once I see that you have the credit score, 660, okay. and so you 660. have at least you have at least $25,000. Okay, got you. Right? Okay. Now I can okay. pre-approve you. Okay, okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So did we finish up on the documentation that was entity docs, Correct. bank statements, and then a copy of each members of the entity's ID? That's all that we need. Oh, okay. So when you say, I'm going to back it up a little bit. You said, I, you said we pull the credit, but we don't report it. Correct. So how was that? Educate me on that. Yeah. So that's, it's a good question, but it's mm -hmm. simple. Okay. And the simple fact is we are making loans to corporations and not consumers. Mm. Okay. So that's the key point. That's why the term hard money, Mike, is all about a short term loan, usually tied to an asset and the interest rate is going to be higher than traditional rates and the points. So that's why we can charge higher interest rates and higher points because we're not subject to the uh, CFPB and those mm -hmm. regulations mm -hmm. the way that consumers are. We would be if we were lending to consumers. Okay. So it's simply that. So with that kind of charter, we cannot report credit. Okay. Do the potential, do the investor sign as a personal guarantee for the, for the corporation? They have to sign. Yes. Yes, they, they do. Okay. Especially if they're inexperienced. And mm -hmm. that's another key point about, hard money lending, a lot of people will call me and they'll say, well, what's your interest rate? And their frame of reference is traditional rates. Well, Correct. this is a totally different Correct. game. Correct. Right? Mm -hmm. So you're going to pay rates right now who range between, uh, let's say, 8% and 12%, depending on one's experience. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't have any experience, you're going to be at the higher end of that spectrum. So, so that's what I was, um, maybe I didn't probably hear that part, but what qualifies a person with enough experience? Two years, three years, you've done oh. tip flips, so. Okay, yeah, I didn't understand what you were saying. So okay. um, the experience is what you have 
purchased, rehabbed, and rented, or purchased, rehabbed, and sold in the past three years. Mm. That's how we look at experience. It could have been either in your personal name okay. or a business name mm -hmm. that you were associated with. Mm -hmm. So that's where we gain experience from. It's mm -hmm. not like you being a real estate broker, uh, even if you were a general contractor for 20 years, mm -hmm. I'm still gonna ask you what your investing experience has been. And that's mm -hmm. how we determine how much you're gonna pay. And you do that for as being a, a credit risk? Is that correct? Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Do you all do, and, and I think you do, I'm assuming, do you do cross collateralization? For those who don't know what that means, that means taking a property that you own and they would use that as title for some of the money that you not have to put down. Is, do you do any correct. of that? We do. You do? We do. Okay. But yeah, but you still have to qualify from the reserve requirement standpoint. Ah, got you. Right? Okay. You, okay. So we have to see that money in the bank. Okay. Let's say if you need to have 25000 uh to qualify for the deal, mm -hmm. you still need to show me 25000 Okay. But if you want to cross-collateralize another property, mm -hmm. um, we, we can do that, and you don't have to use that 25000 Exactly. Okay, but you still have to see them digits on that bank statement. You have to show it, yeah. Got you. <laughs> Got you. Got to show that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's and that. That was the questions I know investors probably ask. Well, I own eight properties over here, maybe four of them free and clear. But you're saying you still need to see them dollar amounts. Correct. Um. That that's that's also so. Again, I believe uh, stories are impactful to people. Walk us through scenario a scenario where a traditional bank or or, or another mortgage uh, company could not do it and. Mark came to the rescue. And what does that sure. story look like? Yeah, man, I got several of those. Several of those. Um, <laughs> I figured that, yeah. But one that comes to mind is there's some uh, some women, sisters, they're sisters. Mm -hmm. um, they're in real estate. They're both uh, real estate agents. Okay. And they're actually pretty experienced. So they called me one day and said, hey, we have this deal. This other lender is telling us we have to use uh, something to do with some zoning. Uh, mm -hmm. that needed to happen because they were going to convert a mixed use to a residential. Okay. Right. So I looked at the experience level. I looked at the deal and saw how it was owned and, and had my operations look at it. And they knew we could lend on it. Well, 10 days later, we were closing on that transaction because they got me their track record. They got me their information and I got something from the city department of zoning because I have relationships there mm -hmm. and it satisfied what we needed to see. Mm. We closed, not only closed that transaction, but those sisters, I think I've closed probably about eight transactions from them. And then they have referred me high level investors who they knew based upon the service they received in the funding. Right. So I have a, I have a favorite saying, Mike, that real estate is a contact sport. No different than how we met. Correct. Exactly. That's right. You know, I, I don't remember the year, but I was thinking about it when you reached out. Uh, when you when you forge these relationships and they there's some value to be brought to the table, mm -hmm. things happen and, and you can make those, uh, the value add is whether it's profit generated, there's revenue or even referrals, right? So right. It's great to be connected, but those they're called the Property Sisters, and they're on Facebook as well. Okay, I previewed them. That was probably one that, just based on that relationship and closing that one deal, I probably received over twenty deals. Wow, right. wow, yeah. that's I I love that. I mean, so you took a scenario where they couldn't kind of quality. You came in and said, "Hey, I got that." Yeah. Based off of, but they still had to fit the criteria. Oh, of course course but they had the experience i don't know who the experience. other lender was wow, that's, that's but it's all about asking questions and mm -hmm. getting the right information so that you can structure the deal and make underwriting feel comfortable about it. okay walk, walk us through a multi uh, uh multi-family which is five units and above mm -hmm. um and walk us through that because I, I have an interest of that as myself and again you'll be educating me on that sure so that's really in the, the commercial realm mm -hmm. of apartment building. So different criteria. What lenders want to see you have is some experience in managing real estate. Um, so if you've had a one, a 
I think you guys, we call them two units, four units here in Chicago. I think you guys call them duplex. Yeah, duplex and, and quad, 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 yeah, duplex and Correct. quadplex. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, that you have had some experience managing those. And once you do, you can then start scaling up to a five unit or a 10 unit. Because mm -hmm. now you're looking at uh, for sure 20% down. Okay. But it's a different underwrite because now we're, we're really looking at the cash flow of the property mm -hmm. or even the potential cash flow of the property mm -hmm. if it's value add. Um, so now we're looking at the operating statement on what some of the expenses are, mm -hmm. uh, what the income, the rent roll. So these are right. things I, I can underwrite a multifamily based upon documentation of a rent roll and an operating statement even before I get to you, the borrower or mm. the entity, right? Mm. So that's the first thing I'm asking for, for a multifamily operating statement, rent roll. Mm -hmm. Cause I want to see how this property is cash flow. Cash flow, exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's going to be value add meeting, you're going to do some updates mm -hmm. and maybe raise rents. Mm -hmm. Then we would have to do, get a projected rent roll and underwrite from that standpoint. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to get, get some of those units updated and maybe move people around. Right. So, and then from a structure standpoint, uh, on single family one to four, we might be a little bit more, uh, we might scrutinize the, where the money came from, uh, on a one to four deal. Why is that? Multi, well, it's, it, again, it's a different underwrite. Gotcha. Okay. So, um, and different, we create loans to sell on a secondary market, even in hard money. Mm -hmm. Right. And some of that criteria is based on who the investor is going to buy. Mm. Commercial, they don't care where the equity comes from on commercial lending because the asset is the determining factor, right? The asset mm. is determining. So if that's cash flowing, it doesn't matter what the income of the borrower is. Correct. The asset's going to carry it. Mm -hmm. So they don't care where the equity comes from. So what, what typically happens on, if it's a, if it's a large multifamily deal, let's say it doesn't have to be large. If it's a 10 unit and let's say you might want to buy that 10 unit and the down payment requirement might be a hundred thousand dollars, right? You only have 20. You can go out and find two other partners, right? You're going to operate as a general partner because you have the credit, you're going to manage the asset, mm -hmm. right? You're going to get the rehab done. All they want to do is get a return on their money. Mm -hmm. So they can come in with the 80,000 mm -hmm. as a limited partner, right? Mm -hmm. And not even have to be on the entity. And we'll accept that structure mm -hmm. because all we need to do is have the equity to make the deal work. Let me dive in. You said they don't have to, their name does not have to be a part of the entity at all because mm -hmm. I, don't, I think I heard some conflicting information. I was doing some research on that myself because that's similar to like a syndication, right? Correct. They, okay, so you got, like you said, you got the general partner, and you got the limited partner, but I thought that they had to form a corporation for that particular, say you're buying building A, they, they form a corporation for that building. I'm the general partner, then I got 10 limited partners, but they'd be part of the corporation. So that's not correct. Well, no, that's, in some cases, that is correct. Okay, okay. So okay. what I was saying was, in some cases, that limited partner doesn't have to be a part of the entity. Oh, that's good. That's real good. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily have to be a part of the entity as long as he's going to pledge the equity for the deal to get done. And, and that investor would just work out an agreement between Correct. him and that partner. Okay. So you do have an interest in this asset. You'll benefit X, so to speak. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. The structure okay. that you're talking about where, yeah, they're forming an entity. You have these LPs, you have the GPs. Correct. Mm -hmm. And the LPs are not going to have their credit pool. They mm, do not have correct. to provide any bank statement or tax exactly. returns or anything mm. like that. Yeah. Mm. It's wow. an appropriate structure as well. Okay. Listen, we could talk all day about this because it really dri Real estate, drives man. my interest. It's real estate, brother. Yeah. Uh, I do want to talk to you, uh, um, Mark, about I got John and Jane Doe a fresh in, fresh in the game. Now, they, they're not experienced, but they have $25,000, dollars $40,000. I mm -hmm. want to. I want to get a flip, a multifamily. What should I need? What do I need to do? So let's talk to that person. So first thing, uh, they got the six hundred and sixty. They have the money. You said. Uh, now you need your entity. So as long as they have the entity structured through the attorney, 
um, or however it's formed in, in their state and they have those documents, then they're going to come to me to get pre-approved. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? Okay. And based on what you just said, they meet that pre-approval uh, criteria. I'm going to issue a pre-approval letter so now they can go out and get under contract. Now, property A, does it have to, what does the numbers have to look like for you all to say, we'll underwrite this deal? Right. So I'll go through kind of like some general numbers that's pretty easy. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll, we'll do an acquisition of 50,000. Okay. Right. And they purchase, I mean, uh, a rehab amount of 50,000. So we have a total cost of $100,000. So the ARV for a, a total cost of $100,000, if you took out a calculator and did $100,000 and divided by 70%, because it's the 70% rule, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to come up with about $142,000. Okay. Right. So the ARB has to be at a $142,000 for us to lend $80,000 mm. or 80% because they're going to bring 20. Correct. Okay. Right. So as long as we can see, so you're a broker and if, if you're working with uh, Jane Doe and John Doe, um, you're going to give them comps that support $142,000. Mm -hmm. And you'll know that if they buy it at 50 and the rehab is 50, it's a good deal for the lender. For the lender, gotcha. And, and you Follow said, me? yeah, I'm following. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm digesting everything in. Now, you said, considering COVID, 15 days, we can wrap it up and close. Yes. Wrap it up and close. Okay. I'd say 15 to 20 just to set a good expectation. Mm, good. Okay. But on the borrower side, if you are efficient with your documentation mm -hmm. and your entity structure, it's clean. There's so many stories where, I know. you know, people ideally want to, they want to form an entity. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm getting in this real estate business. And I had one the other day, it had six partners on it. Well, it's really too much. It's opening up too many things to look at from an underwriting standpoint. Mm -hmm. And so, but if we have a conversation prior to that, we can talk about whose credit is the strongest, Correct. Because everyone doesn't have to go on the entity from a lending standpoint. Correct. But you can have an operating agreement that so. explains your equity share. Correct. Right. So mm -hmm. it's that conversation. So as long as the entity is, is, is formed, it's clean, and they have the credit and some money, they can get funded. Mm. Mark, I mean, boy, listen, you, you are giving me some great, great jewels. Uh, what I want to know. We ask for two, 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 two great golden nuggets, right? Give me uh, two golden nuggets, whether it's a story or, 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 or a book or just anything that can provide some, some insight to somebody getting into the business, already been in the business. Go fly away. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to give you one that I just saw on Facebook this morning. What's and that? I thought it was a profound illustration, and I'll send it to you. Okay. But... It was a picture of a mule standing in a square somewhere and they had the tie tied to one of those little plastic uh, lawn chairs. And it said, the only thing holding you back sometimes is your mindset. Ooh. So true. I re-echo that. So if you could picture right. a mule standing there and because he's tied to a chair, he doesn't realize Correct. it's just a little lightweight plastic chair. And he can just yank it anytime. It can go. So Correct. that's one thing. So when it comes to real estate investing, it's all about the mindset of actually shifting from a consumer standpoint to now you're looking at numbers drive every decision in real estate, the mm -hmm. numbers, not that's your it. emotional disposition. That's it. Mm -hmm. Right. That, that would be one right there. It's the, the numbers tell the story. They do. They never have lied. <laughs> never. Never lied. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, you said two. Yeah, give me another good one. Um, I have a client uh, of Polish descent. He was my biggest client. Uh, Excuse me, one second. No, okay, guess okay. He was my biggest client in 2019. Uh, again, another contact sport. I met him at a home buyer class when I was a retail loan officer years ago, and then when I got into hard money. I just reached out to him. Well, he was a general contractor and he learned under his grandfather, 
right? But he wasn't paying him a lot. And because he wasn't paying him a lot, he needed to go get a job at Best Buy. Mm. So he worked at Best Buy for years and he just wanted more for his life. And then he finally, he was still doing general contracting on the side. Um, and his, grand, his grandfather was a master builder. Mm. Well, last 2019, I took him out to dinner to celebrate his 100th flip. Wow, with you all? I did about 50 of them. Wow, that's still congratulations in itself. You did 50 so, flips with that client, yeah. that's awesome. But in a span of about, I wanna say seven or eight years. Okay. He had started his own business and ended up flipping over 100 properties. Wow. And he splits time now between Florida and Chicago. And his flips sell just like this. And his story of how he was able to scale mm. of getting an understanding of the business from a process standpoint, hiring people. Because you, you know this, Mike, as a manager, you cannot grow without people around you that yeah. you can depend on to do what they're That's supposed it. to do. Got to have a good team. And then implementing systems. Exactly. And he did that, man. So it was, that's a great story. Cause I feel, cause I helped him with about 50 of them. The last 50 mm -hmm. changed his life. Wow. And uh, he's, he's living pretty well right now. Wow. And still continue to flip. Yeah, wow. You know, I got probably have to get so him on the so show. It's possible. We yeah. probably have to get him on the show. <laughs> I talked to him about it. Sure. Oh, see, now you see what the great networking does. Well, before we let you go, Mark, you are, and I didn't clarify this, even though you're in Illinois, you get to work with anybody throughout the country. Is that correct? Totally. I can lend nationally throughout the country. Um, and also, I didn't mention also, Mike, we can do new construction. So New construction. New construction okay. is, is something huge. If, if those who want to follow me on, on Facebook, I was actually at a job site yesterday mm -hmm. where I am showing with one of my developer clients uh, the five phases of construction. So. Okay. We're going out through each phase, and you can see, and this is going to be, this is a one million dollar house. The cost, wow. one million dollars, and it's going to sell at about two point one. And he's building two. Okay. Yeah. So okay. I'm showing each phase. So we can also do new construction under our program, mm -hmm. uh, fix and flip. Now we're going to vet the. You got to have the right builder. Correct. But even even as a beginning investor, if you have the business acumen to understand mm. the numbers, you can engage a builder, right? hire him to build right architect and all those things and it can happen for you as well so mm. you know those follow me you can get it i'm giving you the blueprint on how to do it on my right. on my instagram that's right you really new are construction is another one but and then just scaling up mike you know i have goals in this business i'm on the 17th floor downtown chicago right now wow and i see high rises around me apartment mm. buildings and i think to myself somebody built that somebody built that that's right that's right. That's Why right. not me? That's how I look at I, I believe in that concept. They can do it. I can do the same thing they can do. Exactly. So that's something that I'm looking at over the horizon and in, in my future of okay. building a high rise, man. Okay. That's a beautiful thing, brother. Well, you know something? I want to say, Mark, we're going to have all your social media handles on this. And again, you know, once we get this nice and beautiful edited up, we're going to get it over to you. As always, brother, thanks a lot for being part of the team. Thanks Glad to be here, man. Thanks for connecting again. If I can help any, anyone down there, uh, I'm looking to come down oh, to the triad, look at investment opportunities myself. But if I can be of some value, give me a call. Okay, brother. Hold on. We're going to get this picture. <laughs>